Hello, this is Wampire here to go over uh, Professor Bram Frank's knife usage. Okay, so uh, this is from Mantis Knives, designed by Professor Bram Frank. And uh, yeah, so the basic idea, you see it has a pocket clip right there, and it's going to be tip down carry. Um, so it'll be sitting, if you're right-handed, in your right uh, front pocket pants pocket right and as you can see the clip goes up to there so you're gonna have this much sticking out right some people want uh, a concealed carry um, concealed carry can you know legally it, it could be could be trouble but this is not a concealed carry and you got this much sticking out out people may not like that but um, for one, the tip down part. Some people don't like tip down. Professor Bram Frank likes to tip down because if it's tip up and it accidentally opens up and you reach to grab your knife, your fingers are going to be cut. So he likes it this way. Okay. And um, the other reason for this is you have this much sticking out, so you're going to be able to grab a nice chunk up here to pull it out. Okay, so it's not you got to do this or, or whatever. It's you get a nice big old chunk right here and pull, pull the thing out. So once you pull it out, it's already in position for you to use. So it just, yeah, it makes sense. So let's, let's go over the scenario. I'm seeing some suspicious people, right? I get this bad feeling and they're headed towards my way. And they look like they're going to be very violent towards me, um, possibly, right? And, and I just don't like that. So what I want is I want this available, okay? So I I'm, want it so it's in the front pants pocket, nice and available. Not concealed, okay? Not con I'm not hiding it, all right? I'm not doing anything illegal, anything suspicious. Just want it available, okay? And if they attack me... So my suspicions are right, but let's say I am ready. So I want to be mentally ready. And if they do attack me, the first thing that I should be doing is not take out this thing, take out my knife, take out my gun. No, it should be defend against the threat first. Okay, so unless I was already able to make distance, get out of there, or go the other direction or whatever, those, that should all come first. But let's say I couldn't for whatever reason and they're making a violent attack towards me, right? I should be defending that violent attack, whether it's with a baseball bat that they're coming at me, or whether it's a haymaker punch, or whether it's a knife that they're doing, whatever the case, I should defend against that first, because if I don't, I'm gonna take that attack, and I don't wanna take it, because that, that could finish me. That could, you know, possibly I end up on the ground unconscious or something. So I, I need to defend against that. That's number one, okay? Number two is I want to get this out as fast as I can, all right? And when I do that, you see, I'm taking it out like so. I don't have to worry about taking the getting it out, get the blade out, or, you know, taking it out and hooking it and making the blade. None of that. Nothing complex. Just take it out and have it in my hand like so. Position doesn't even really matter. Just take this thing out and have it. Okay, so let's say let's say I took it out like this and all this is covered right here. I have here to strike with. Okay, let's say I took it out and I got this the, the way that I want right here. Okay, so I could use that to strike with. Now, the striking wise, I think what a lot of people misunderstand here is I am not going 110% and here to I'm not going 110% what what professor Bram Frank talks about is this is this is not alpha is what he says you know is you just take it out and then you just present it in front of you like like you're praying for dear life like this and hopefully they punch this thing hopefully they punch this and they hurt their their own fingers okay and maybe that might discourage and stop it but He's, he's just saying, just at this point, I'm still defending. 
So it's it's not I got to use this a certain way necessarily. I'm just this is an enhancement. So if I block, parry, you know, swat things down, whatever, it's just in my hand to help me, but I'm still doing what I need to do. And I don't have to worry about, oh, I cut my own blade, uh, my blade cuts myself. I don't have to worry about it because the blade's not out. If I get shoved into the wall, it's, I'll be fine. If the blade was out and I get shoved into the wall, that blade's going to be right here, very close to my face. Now I'm worried that I could end up accidentally cutting myself. So with this, just take it out closed and just do what you got to do. Protect yourself. Try to keep running away. Try to keep making distance. Protect yourself against the immediate threat. That's all you're doing, but this can help. Now at this point, I think it's also important to to say this, is that I take this out, I'm using this to defend. They don't see it. I'm not showing it to them. I'm not going, look, look at, look at what I have. Okay, everything's happening super fast. Like even if I just do this, at that point, they've already swung, okay? They've already swung. So they're in motion and boom, they might hit this. They may not, but, but, or, or it might hit me on the forearm. I cover. Okay. So th this is all happening in motion. So it's not that I'm concealing this, but they're not going to see it. And then that's the thing about knife attacks. A lot of times people don't even know that they've been stabbed until, until way after the fact. They're like, yeah, man. Oh, man. We got into a fight. What a crazy brawl. Wait a minute. What's this wet stuff? Oh, it's my blood. You know, so that that's the case. And and I've I've talked to several uh, people that that have told me stuff like that. You know, where the person that got stabbed didn't even know that they were stabbed till till after. So that that's what I'm saying. They didn't even know that the the other person had a knife. So I am not taking this out showing them the blade, showing them the knife, and then they take out a gun and shoot me because it, it, that could escalate the situation. That's not what I'm doing. So I'm just still protecting myself, trying to get away, get, get, stop it, you know, whatever. You know, move, move out of my way. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to run. Okay, so that's all I'm doing, but this can help. This can help. So rather push someone just like with your hands or push them with a little bit of oomph with this or this right here, you know, or if they got me by the throat, then I could use this to help, you know, instead of just trying to wrestle their hand off, I could use this kind of thing to help me. So it's just a little enhancer there, nothing super complex. And if I know some techniques, if I know some actual uh, martial arts techniques, then I could still use those techniques combined with this to help, you know, put them in finger locks and stuff. And, oh, those finger locks is, to me, is, is great because, once again, um, in the original uh, Filipino martial arts lock flow that, that I learned, finger locks was, was a big thing. Professor Remy Presas uh, did finger locks um, alongside Professor Wally J. So uh, it's, it's awesome that this helps you, helps you doing finger locks. So... I think that's great. And think about it. We're, it's not to, you're not trying to break their finger. It's not, it's not a super aggressive attack that, that you're really thinking. This is pain compliance. So this is more like a police hold, an arresting technique, or trying to just self-defense, get their hand off of you, or if they're, if they're grabbing you and this kind of stuff. You're just trying to get it off, you know, or if they have a weapon, disarming the weapon, you know, by putting them into a, a finger lock. And the finger, even if they're bigger, stronger, and meaner than you, is one of the smallest joints on the human body, at least that's um, external, because they say the smallest joints, I believe, is in the ear. But um, yeah, that's external, that's accessible to you. So attacking the finger, and, and I could tell you that I have been in situations where I, you know, I took the person's back trying to apply a rear naked choke and the dude's neck was just, it was a monster neck. And I was just like, I, I cannot apply this technique on the person. I can't put them to sleep, you know, 
is just too muscular and it just wasn't possible. Same with a guillotine choke happened to me. I went up against a guy who was a wrestler and the, the dude's neck was, and my, I remember my instructor looking at me like, put him to sleep. What are you doing? And I was just like, I, I can't. His, his neck's like a freaking barrel, you know? So anyway, the finger, I feel much more confident um, doing, attacking the finger, you know, compared to a bigger joint or something like a neck or something like that. So, uh, yeah, take it out and just using it like so. Now, because it's already in my hand and I don't want it open yet, I don't because I, it's, it's the OODA loop. If you've ever heard of that, you know, observe, orient, decide, and act. So this goes along with the OODA loop concept where I take this out and the OODA loop was introduced to me by um, uh, instructor Jaime uh, from back, back in uh, college. But uh, his, I met him back in college and he was a friend of mine since then. But now he, uh, he teaches uh, tripwire. And, and that is a, uh, uh, my understanding, a self-defense and counter-piper uh, uh, self-defense class and, and deals with, uses knives and stuff like that. So anyway, um, so he told me about the OODA loop. And so if I immediately take the blade out, I'm not even sure that's the right tool for the situation yet. When something happens, are you sure that that is the right tool, you know? Um, and then you might end up in a situation where now you got to use it. Maybe you didn't even want to use it. And now because you took the knife out and, and that's happened to me before, not with a knife, but with a pen where I felt like I could have resolved the situation empty handed. But now I had the pen in my hand. I was like, oh, I'm going to have to really hurt you now, you know, so that could happen with a knife and with a knife would be even worse. Taking this out closed gives you that option to see what is going on and still be armed, still be ready for self-defense. And if I do go, oh, I do need the blade. Oh, crap, it, it's bad. I need the blade. It's a second away, really. And, and I know every second matters, but now it's literally, it's just here, right there. It's already in action, just like that. Okay, I could do that. With my own finger, that's a kinetic opening, and that's what the professor recommends. So I'm both hands right here, ready to go, boom, boom, you know. Or I could, the way that this thing is designed, as you guys can see, look, look at that shape. It's huge. So it hooks on just about anything you could hook on. It could be their collarbone. It could be their arm. It could be their back. It could be their shirt, whatever. Whatever you want to you hook on, you hook. It could be a branch, a tree branch. So that is what makes it different from the Emerson Wave. The Emerson Wave is very, very specific for taking it out of your pocket in the ready position. So it's basically trying to be a fixed blade. That is not what this is trying to be. That is not, that doesn't work with the thoughts of this because we want it closed so that it's safer for us. If I have to defend and grapple around, I could do that safely. Grappling around with a blade is dangerous for them, but it's also dangerous for me too. So that way, because, you know, their body can press back and, and I could end up cutting myself too. Sure, they'd probably take the worst end of it, but I don't want to get cut, period. Period, whether it's my own blade or not. But um, yeah, so with this, that kind of worry is gone, okay? And so use it closed. They're not going to see it. That, that's that's another important part that, that I want to mention to you guys because I'm not showing it off. It comes out and I'm just I'm still just doing whatever it takes, survive, run, and whatever. All nice and convenient in the closed position, nice and safe. And once again, this is not made for huge haymaker shots. I'm not fighting. I am defending. So just boom, boom, you know, like this. Grab me, you know, just like like so. Okay. So boom, 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 like that. So it's not huge haymaker. This is not brass knuckles. It's it's not, that's not the idea of this thing, okay? So anyway, I hope that makes sense. That's it for now. Thank you for viewing and take care, folks.